recorded in Chicago, Illinois, with your hosts, Ken, Matt, Neil, and Jeff. This is Triviality. The cream of the crop. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Triviality, the show where a lack of seriousness meets a little bit of knowledge. My name is Ken. I'm going to be your host today, and boy, we have a very full house today. We have Jeff and Matt in the studio. How are you guys doing? Doing good. Good. All right, and uh, Neil's gone. I'm not going to make up some uh, bull today because we have a lot to get through. Uh, today from uh, Trivia Hot Dish, we have Tom and Jill. How are you guys doing? We're doing pretty well. Yep. Great. And you guys are going to be a team today uh, going up against Team Triviality. Can you tell us a little bit about your show and yourselves? Um, we... Uh... We're, we record out of Minnesota, um, hence the hot dish uh, moniker there. Uh, we kind of saw the, all the trivia shows out there and felt that, uh, what, six hours a week isn't enough, so we just wanted to add a little bit more time for everybody to listen. Uh, yeah. We thought all the trivia shows out there are pretty great, but we wanted a little bit more time to listen because we run out usually by Tuesday. Uh, so I uh, wanted to add that in, and it's uh, we kind of try to take some different rounds and try to do a little different spin, but we... Uh, we do crib off of uh, the masters like you. Great. Well, that's another great show to check out uh, to our listeners if you want a little extra trivia in your life. And on the other side, we have Misinformation, Julia and Lauren. How are you guys doing? Hello. We're doing great. Oh, How my are gosh, you? We're doing so great. And can you guys tell us a little bit about your show and lives? Sure. So um, we we have a weekly podcast, um, Misinformation. It's a trivia podcast for ladies and gents who love cool trivia and sticking it to annoying teams at pub quiz yeah. because there's plenty <laughs> out here. I don't know about you guys, but they're annoying. So we're the annoying part. Where we are? We're we're in Rod. Chester, New York. Yes. So right, um, we have a, kind of always loved pub quiz, mm-hmm. and um, I was on Jeopardy in 2015, but I was a nice. casualty of Matt Jackson. Mm-hmm. So um, bad timing on yeah. my part. But <laughs> and, <laughs> and I have I never picked. been on Jeopardy, so <laughs> there you sh- have it. It should be mentioned that your show is more of a um, informative deep dive on specific topics. Is that how you would describe it? Yeah great way to put it yeah we usually uh teach each other one topic mm-hmm. per week uh and then um we have a 10 question quiz at the end that may or may not be related <laughs> yeah it's a great kind of show. Uh, almost like a good job brain kind of style yeah, yeah. i think that they're a good influence on yes. us absolutely yeah. <laughs> Everyone right. likes them, so <laughs> so for the, <laughs> for the sake of simplicity today we will have trivia hot dish we'll have misinformation and team triviality and uh, without further ado, let's toss it over to the rules guy, or should I say, uh, get up here and, uh, and speak into the mic. The rules of the game are simple. 20 questions split into two rounds worth 10 points apiece. At halftime, there'll be a special swing round designed by this week's host. After regulation, players will enter the final round with the points that they've accumulated and will have a chance to wager 0 to 30 points on five categorized questions. At the end of the game, someone will be named the cream of the crop. Ooh, I'm talking about all the way to the top, yeah. Wow, great reading today. Better every time. <laughs> I, I really I really feel like he's improving. What do you guys think? Oh, the joke just never gets old. We, that's I tried I like to about. kill it a couple weeks ago. We got we to gotta have, have him in for the Game of Death episodes, too, and that way he can uh, be with us more often. But uh, take off. You're all done. Thank you very much. All right, without further ado, let's begin the game. Question one, round one. A nearly complete... Hadrosaurus fulkii dinosaur fossil was discovered in what U.S. state in 1858? The site is considered the birthplace of American dinosaur paleontology and has been designated as a historical landmark since. So I'm looking for the U.S. state that the first major fossil discovery in the U.S. was found. Mm. Misinformation is locked in. (laughs) All right. So quick lock in from misinformation. Do you feel comfortable with either of those? I kind of am leaning towards this one. I know there's in. some. You guys, good you guys are locked in too. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's chat. Um, you wrote down Wyoming. something. I can't read upside down. Wyoming. Oh, Wyoming. Montana. Those are states. They are states. How do you feel about those? <laughs> Montana is bigger. Montana is bigger, and I I know that there's a lot of excavating up there. I know that um, geologically it was a lot warmer up there than you would expect at the time. So. Ooh. Is this Sue the dinosaur? Yes. Really? No, oh, well, that's all I know about dinosaurs. Let's go Montana. <laughs> Deal. We're all right. In. Montana from uh, Triviality. Let's go over to Trivia Hot Dish. All right. Well, we 
We're thinking that it might be the tar pits that are located mm. in California. Not a bad uh, guess. And uh, misinformation right. locked in pretty quickly. So what was their assessment? Well, uh, gentlemen and ladies, uh, we decided on Wyoming. Uh, mm. I think personally because it's the squarest state. Uh, and What are you saying about paleontologists? Only right on now? a map. Yeah. Well, also, not for nothing, but I work at a science museum. All right, there you go. Well, So I'm really hoping this is correct. Well, I can't give out points uh, for the first question here. The answer is, surprisingly, oh. New Jersey. Oh. New oh. Jersey? Yeah. <laughs> Great. Yeah. So far, so good. <laughs> All right. Let's move right along to the next question. Uh, this one's about video games. Uh, what 1985 arcade game is noted as being one of the first multiplayer dungeon crawl games to hit the arcade? With a four-player capacity, the player could select either a warrior, wizard, Valkyrie, or elf. We're locked in. All right. Team Triviality locked in right away. All right. And uh, Trivia Hot Dish is locked in, right? We are locked in, yes. Awesome. So, Miss Inforation, feel free to talk it out. Ugh. <laughs> uh, I work at a video game museum, so this is especially <laughs> embarrassing. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> That's true. We're really sucking it up over here. Okay. <laughs> No, I I got I have no read on a fantasy arcade game from eighty five. Fantasy arcade game. I'm gonna go with <laughs> Barbarella. Ooh, the question fun. mark. Great. All some, right. Some would Let's consider that a fantasy. Just, just to put us out of our misery. Yeah. <laughs> Barbarella. All right. Let's go over to yeah. trivia hot dish. I think. Uh, I think going back to a kid, I think it was Gauntlet that you stayed up uh, for hours and hours and hours at parties. Gauntlet. Okay. And uh, what did Team Triviality say? Yeah, this was uh, immortalized in uh, when you were dying, it would say, Red Warrior needs food badly. It's a gauntlet. Gauntlet is correct. So Team Triviality and uh, Trivia Hot Dish are on the board. Yeah. I played a lot of the Nintendo (laughs) version. It's an Atari game, too. It was very bad, yeah. (laughs) The ports were not good to the home consoles. All right, question three. What animal is most closely associated with Timothy Treadwell, in part due to a documentary from filmmaker Werner Herzog? We got, we're, we're good here. Oh yeah, we are <laughs> locked in. All right, misinformation is locking in with confidence or perhaps uh, <laughs> insanity. Yes. We are locked in as well. Okay, right. Trivia Hot Dish is in. Jeff. Have you yes. seen this movie? I have not. Oh, good. I, don't, I don't know what the movie is. Documentary so. film by Werner Herzog. I mean, how many animals can there be? Uh, we're looking several. at several. <laughs> There's probably several. Probably. Uh, what do you want to? Maybe some some platypus, some, some ducks. <laughs> I'm, getting, I'm getting a lot of head shakes. From Neil. <laughs> Neil's not in the studio. Uh, that's right. Sorry. If Neil were in the studio, I'm sure he'd be having a heart attack right about now. Mm. Um, wolf. I'm fine. You're not out the. No, no, I, I don't know. We're locked in with. I'm the not wolf. the film guy. Well, yeah. So I am. We're locked in with the wolf. <laughs> out of the two of us. <laughs> All right. And uh, let's go over to misinformation. Um, uh, I'm feeling pretty confident because it's one of my favorite documentaries. Uh, I'm gonna go with Grizzly Bear. Mm. Okay. And trivia hot dish. Oh yeah. And yes, we put down bear. It was the guy who got eaten by the bears. <laughs> yes, he yeah. was eaten. Yeah, Killed and not trust me. This is definitely I, grizzly I man. Read my handwriting. <laughs> All right, and we have points for anybody who said bear or grizzly bear. Mm. Great, awesome. Great, I'm on the board. On the board. All right, moving on <laughs> to question did that. four. Let's say Matt wants to pick out a beautiful lady's shoe to wear to his quinceanera. <laughs> Why would I? <laughs> Despite his massive stature, we all know that he has freakishly small feet and normally wears a men's 7.5. What size should he buy in women's shoes? I'm locked in. <laughs> <laughs> he knows. He knows. I did work at a shoe store before. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. We're good. And we're going to walk in as well. All right, all the teams are locked in, so let's go ahead and start with uh, Triviality, who had some confidence on this one for some yeah. reason. <laughs> you said it's 7.5, right, was the men's size? Yep. Yeah, uh, I believe there's a two-size difference between men's and women's shoes, so we locked in with 9.5. 9.5 for Team Triviality. Let's go over to Trivia Hot Dish. Uh, 
We weren't really sure. I knew that women's shoes, like the like the sizes, like you went down to go into men's, but we just said nine. Okay, nine, nine and, uh, and a half size difference. Let's go over to misinformation. Uh, we went the other way. Yeah. Uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe to our detriment, and we locked in with six. Six. All right. Well, Team Triviality is the only team getting points here. It is a two size difference. Nine point five is the correct answer. I'm a big shoe guy. <laughs> Super into shoes. Except if yeah. you're wearing a seven and a half, you're not a big shoe guy. No. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Watch out. I would take the the kid size prices to be honest on some of the Jordans. So <laughs> that wouldn't be the worst thing. And it's time for our question five. Uh, normally, these are listener-submitted questions. I actually just wrote this one, uh, but feel free to send in those uh, submissions, and we'll be happy to use them. Number five. I got a hot date with a taxonomist and want to impress her by cooking some Italian food. I'm going to start off with some breaded Gallus Gallus Domesticus. Add a squeeze of citrus limon. Cook with wine, olive oil, butter, and some allium sativum. And finish off with some Capari Spinoza. What's for dinner? I can't think of the name of it. It's that chicken my mom likes. We are locked in with no, the chicken her mom that's likes. That's mushrooms. All right. Team Triviality um, is locked in with uh, an answer. She only cooks three things, and this is one of them. <laughs> it's a much broader palette. I'm than glad I that at least this question was readable. <laughs> yeah. Like I get, I like that you get what's going it's on. It's not here. Salisbury steak. I don't know what it is. All right, we're locked in after a lot of. Because I yeah, because there's a. Yeah, there's a regional dish here in New That's York that I've regional. never... regional. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, one way or another, misinformation is locked in. <laughs> oh, I, I think Jill's got it here. Um, it's capers, chicken, good. garlic, and then... You could say that. I just have never heard of it. <laughs> um, let's just... I think it's I think it's Milanesa. We're going to go with chicken Milanesa. Okay. And we're going over to Team Triviality. Uh, we didn't really discuss and i just wrote down chicken primavera so that's what i wrote okay and misinformation with the the dish that your mom really likes <laughs> well apparently i'm wrong so uh the only answer that we could come up with i'm sure of it julia is not is chicken francese okay well i can't verify if uh, any of those are technically correct but the answer i have down is chicken piccata mm. that's the one that's what i was trying to think of that's the one with the capers I only eat the chicky chicky parm parm. The yeah. uh, the Capari <laughs> Spinoza are the capers. That's right. Not some spinach. Long ass rice. I think you guys figured out that the others were uh, chicken, <laughs> lemon, and uh, allium sativum is onion. Mm. Mm. I know. I, I just really want to cook with Spinoza, but he's been dead for a few hundred years. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Moving on to uh, actually, let's get a quick score update before we move on. Yeah, please. All right. After five, uh, team triviality with twenty. Uh, Team Trivia Hot Dish also with 20, and Team Misinformation with 10. All right, so still a very close game, anybody's game. All right, question six, moving on to my my one hockey question that I like to ask every game. Most (laughs) NHL players hope to be remembered by entering the Hall of Fame or having their name on the Stanley Cup. Sean Avery had other plans, however, when his on-ice actions in 2008 resulted in a change to the unsportsmanlike conduct policy known as the Avery Rule. What is the Avery Rule? And it's not necessarily a one-word answer, so if you just say it in normal I language, it. I will uh, give you credit. Yeah, he's a he's a ranger. You might remember this one over in New York. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm no gonna uh, I'm gonna. I'm going to write down what I think it is. Okay. Right. We'll let you guys talk because we have no idea. So we're going to lock in with that wrong answer. Okay. Um, <laughs> he got suspended for like, like it was a ridiculous amount of games, like 80 to 100 games or whatever. Okay. And I think it was for using his skate as a weapon. So, oh, uh, there was definitely a guy oh, who got Jesus. cut about 10 years ago and he nearly bled to death on the yeah. ice. And it was like because the trainer was on the right side of the ice. Like, yeah. I the... don't, it's either that or he sticks someone in the head. I can't remember which one it is. <laughs> He's, he's a very violent individual. <laughs> Hanging out with yeah. John Rocker. Uh, I'm okay with uh, using your skate as a weapon if that's what you feel. Yeah, we're just locking uh-huh. with that. I kind of remember somebody doing something really bad with a skate, but yeah. Well, uh, let's <laughs> <laughs> murdering somebody. <laughs> Some murdering somebody with a skate. Uh, let's go over to Trivia Hot Dish. Get their answer. We put down spitting. 
Spitting. Mm. Okay, oh, not a bad answer. I and let's go that. with uh, misinformation. So he got in trouble for standing right in front of Marty Brodeur and waving his arms back and forth in front of the goalie's face. And so that's the Avery rule is you can't like intentionally <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, distract act the goalie. <laughs> yep, that's exactly oh, correct. You can't uh, face the goalie and wave your stick or arms in front of their face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you also can't use you your skate. Also can't, <laughs> you also can't stab them. But also don't use your skate as a weapon. Yeah, yeah. That's, also, that's also a no-no in hockey. I don't know if you yeah. guys know that. I read uh, Sean Avery's uh, a Wikipedia page, and it's just full of stuff. He, he was a real <laughs> troublemaker. Seems to and have... then he was like a Vogue intern, like a year later. Yeah, he's like a he's like a <laughs> really male model weird. too yeah. and stuff. It's <laughs> kind of weird. All right, moving on to question seven. Uh, points for misinformation on that one. Uh, mm. A little bit more uh, culinary questions. Um, number seven. What is the French name for an appetizer served prior to a meal, as chosen by and compliments of the chef? This is often done to show a chef's creative flair or compliment the meal. It's a We're French locked term. In. All right. Information this is locked information in. This is locked in. Sure. So we're locked in. Uh, misinformation yeah. locked in, right? Yep. Yes. Yes. All right, hot dish. Oh, we are locked in as well. Okay. All right. Let's start with you. Uh, well, we said that it is the amuse bouche. Amuse bouche, and let's go to misinformation. Uh, we also went with amuse bouche because that is my favorite phrase to use in. Almost any anything. eating setting, any eating scenario. At all. Or, okay. Yeah. Okay. And like your pre-food snack is is <laughs> your um. So uh, a handful of goldfish crackers <laughs> is my preferred <laughs> food. <laughs> For when you're gonna eat like a cheddar sandwich or something. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. To like really, really prime your taste buds. Warm it up. Okay. Yeah. And uh, well, triviality. If you're here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, triviality. Triviality. Grateful that spelling doesn't count. We said amuse bouche. A moose bouche is correct. All, points all Yay. around. I'm kind of surprised by that. Good job, everybody. Got to get just a little bit of a little bit of a flavor. Yeah. So the joke is, is that my um, my sister is a pastry chef. So sometimes we go to her um, <laughs> her restaurants and eat at like fancier places than we're used to. And I always demand an moose bouche, and she's like, "You can't ask for an moose bouche. They just give it to you." <laughs> I was like, "It's not fancy if time. there's no moose. I need the moose." <laughs> I need, to, I need my boost amused. <laughs> All right. Question eight. If you were shipwrecked and found yourself stranded on the fictional Isla Nublar, what work of fiction have you stumbled into? Starvation and thirst may not be your most pressing concern. If Neil were here. <laughs> he would know this one? Most likely. Uh, I know I've heard it. So now I just have to figure out why wait, I've heard it. Is it, is it this? Yes, it is. Okay, never mind. We're, <laughs> we're locked in. All right, we're locked in. We're locked in. Miss Info. Miss Info is locked in, and Triviality is locked oh, in. So man. let's uh, toss to Trivia Hot Dish, see what they're thinking. Um, yeah, we kind of got two up in the air. Uh, we have Lord of the Flies thinking, um, but then also the Odyssey, where the island uh, was at Circe's Island, where no one needed to worry about food or drink the wine, and the food flowed freely. Um. I say we go with the Odyssey. Right. We're going to go with the Odyssey. Okay, the Odyssey. Um, let's go with misinformation next. We're not positive, but we're just going to say Gulliver's Travels. Yeah, Gulliver's they Travels. seem to have a lot of funny names for things, so we're going to go with Gulliver's Travels on All that. All right, <clears throat> and uh, Team Triviality, why are we not worried about food or drink we, immediately? We went with a much more contemporary piece of literature. I believe this was 1990, uh, Michael Crichton's Jurassic Park. Yes, you might be running from dinosaurs Ooh. in Jurassic Park if you were on Isla Nublar. <laughs> so, we went classic over here. Yeah. I mean, that was wrong. Points for oh, Triviality. It was Jill's first guess. I, uh, I killed it, and uh, now I'm in the doghouse. Uh, he does that. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's why she asked the questions. Well, moving on to question nine. While trying to escape the dinosaurs, you decide to take shelter by running into the ocean. Unfortunately, you also suffer from phobia, so you decide it's better to just get eaten by the T-Rex. What is phycophobia? Can you, Can you spell, spell that, that for us? F Y K I A phobia. Can you use it in a sentence that well describes what it is? <laughs> I'm in the ocean and I have phycophobia, so I'm gonna get the f out of the ocean. Uh, fear, fear, of fear of ficus. It's not a lot of ficus in the ocean. <laughs> so 
Okay. Right. Misinformation is locked in. All right. Misinformation is in. Uh, we are locked in. Okay. okay so Trivia hot dish is in. Let's chat. You wrote fish. Everyone's locked in? Yeah. Okay. Fish and algae. I don't know. Uh, Plankton. Kelp. I mean, there's a bunch of stuff in the sea that you might not be liking. SpongeBob. Sharks. Whales. Sharks. Uh, starfish. Uh, those are in kind of derms, so I'm pretty sure that's not. No, I don't care. You say something. <laughs> I have less interest in the question. I don't know. Fish seems like a really logical one. Yeah. Although I think that would be like pescophobia, right? Or something? <laughs> sea life. Does that count? <laughs> we can just see. I don't think it's a fear of water. Although that's a thing. What about salt? Hydrophobia? Uh, salt? No. Algae. Algae it is. Done. All right. Team Locked. Triviality is in with algae. Let's go with misinformation next. We're going to say seaweed. We're going to say seaweed. Seaweed. Yeah. Anyone touches your foot and grosses you out, <laughs> run back and get killed by the T-Rex. Uh, also, apparently, they make snacks out of them. You can dry them out on the beach and munch away. They're mm. full of protein, I think. Yeah. So, right. so we're right. going to go with seaweed. And how about Trivia Hot Dish? We went with jellyfish. No Ooh, good reason. Jellyfish. Mm. Well, as funny as it is, uh, misinformation is correct. It's the fear of seaweed. Oh. <laughs> so it's weird. I was thinking seaweed, but I didn't have the name for it in my head. So, Final question of the first round. What band do you get when you leave members Tim Armstrong, Lars Fredrickson, Matt Freeman, and depending on the era, either Brett Reed or Brandon Stenekart out in the sun too long? Okay, triviality is locked in. We have switched strategies to just trying to distract other people. <laughs> Say other we can't outsmart them. So. <laughs> Do any of those names uh, ring any bells for you guys? Oh, no, not at all. Stretch Armstrong does. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Stretch Armstrong. Yeah, we're, we're not the people on our trivia team that know bands, yeah. band members. <laughs> okay. So Band members. Uh, great. We are locked in. <laughs> We've all guessed. All right, they're in. Sorry. Trivia Hot Dish uh, stands alone, so let's uh, go ahead and hear what you have to think. So I remember there was a band that was just, they were like raisin figures, and they danced and sang. Um, I don't, it was something, it was probably by one of the raisin makers. I think there's only one. I don't know what that company is. Um, I think we just say the raisins. Nah. We're going to say the raisins. Okay, the raisins. Were you thinking of the uh, California raisins? I, I probably was thinking of the California the famous claymation band. Yeah, just sing yeah. a bunch of temptation songs. Their oh. Christmas special. Oh my it's, gosh, is wow. Wow. <laughs> Jeff's kiss. They're so good. Uh, Their harmonies oh, are so oh, tight. Crap! Uh-oh. I just realized it. <laughs> what do you say? You want to give them a, You want to give them a do over? Yeah, I don't care. Let's give them a do over. <laughs> All right, I want to say craisins and the because it's the cranberries go mm. become the craisins. Uh, okay, that's yeah, that's yeah, that makes more that's, that's, women, that no, makes but, more okay. slightly more sense. We'll okay, they're going with but, the cranberries. But, How about you guys have misinformation? Uh, we <laughs> we also went with the California raisins, mm. right, we who the... were a real band, <laughs> 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 who uh, had a great claymation special. Everyone should watch it on YouTube. But uh, yeah, we had no idea. So we went with the California Raisins. All right. California Raisins. And uh, I think Team Triviality is going a different way on this. I think if you left these guys out in the sun, they would become quite rancid. And we said rancid. The correct answer is rancid. (laughs) So maybe if you gave the California Raisins some uh, mohawks. Yeah, they would be rancid. Not not in this punch bowl. No. No. That was their punk special, wasn't it? That was their what? Their punk special. Oh, they just their punk ones. special, yeah. <laughs> they just sing Sex Pistols songs. Sorry. Can't look at us. All right, Matt, can we get the score update? Yes, going into the swing round, it's Trivia Hot Dish with 30, Misinformation with 40, and Team Triviality pulling into a lead with 50. All right, so still anybody's game so far. Uh, I want to toss it over to uh, Matt really quick. You You have a read on how we're doing on reviews right now? Yes, over the last week, we've gotten about four or five new ones, so we appreciate all of those. Um, so 
You just go to iTunes and leave us a review. Once we get to 150, we'll be giving out some sweet prizes. Actually, nice. uh, if you if you don't have an iPhone or another Apple device, feel free to leave a review wherever um, you'd like. Facebook. Um, yeah, or, we're counting all of them. Or any of your reviews. Once we get to 150 iTunes reviews, we're just going to pull all of the reviews yeah. and uh, we'll give prizes away from there. So Review it to your friend and have them uh, email us and let us know. Don't feel limited just because you have a probably superior Android device. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> And uh, Jeff, you had a read on how Patreon is going. Uh, I do. Patreon's going very well. Um, we're we're very very happy and uh, to be supported as much as we are by our listeners and our community here. If you'd like to be one of those people and donate to our show, you can certainly do so at patreon.com slash triviality podcast where you can get um, stickers, bonus episodes. And uh, if you're so inclined to climb the ranks and climb uh, higher level belts, we also have a really cool like triviality swag box. And uh, so check us out. Just reached our $500 goal. Uh, so you're, you're guaranteeing one bonus episode a month. It's true. Fantastic. We, uh, we take no cut of the show and uh, we just try and <laughs> redevelop that into more great content for everybody who listens. So thank you. All right. So moving on to the swing round. Uh, this one is going to be a musical zoo. I have uh, in front of me 10 um, artists and albums from said artists. All the uh, albums have a animal on the album cover, and I would like to know simply what animal is on the album cover. So these are 10 questions, five points apiece. Sorry if these are a little bit, uh, you know, on the contemporary side, but I did my best to uh, spread them out a little bit. All right, so starting with number one is Deftones Diamond Eyes. Next is The Prodigy, Fat of the Land. Next is Slipknot, Iowa. Weezer, Ratitude. Pink Floyd, Adam Hart Mother. Fleetwood Mac, Mystery to Me. Hum, You'd Prefer an Astronaut. Pearl Jam, Versus. Metallica, The Black Album, or self-titled Metallica. And... Failure magnified. So once again, those are Deftones, Diamond Eyes, The Prodigy, Fat of the Land, Slipknot, Iowa, Weezer, Ratitude, Pink Floyd's Adam Hart Mother, Fleetwood Mac, Mystery to Me, Hum, You'd Prefer an Astronaut, Pearl Jam's Versus, Metallica, The Black Album, and Failure magnified. Failure magnified feels like what's going on right now. Yeah, I I literally have nothing, so you can put any animals. If you just want to put the same animal for all of them so we'll get some points. All right, so it looks like all the answers are in after some deliberation from Trivia Hot Dish and Misinformation and a lot of deliberation Mm. from Team Trivia. Like way too much. All right, let's start with number one, which was Deftones and Diamond Eyes. Uh, Trivia Hot Dish, what did you say? We said Snake. Snake, okay. And uh, how about uh, misinformation? First of all, I would like to say this is a big, this is a very dude group of bands. This is a dude tastic group of bands. I put uh, Fleetwood Mac in there. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. So it's Chrissy McVie and Stevie <laughs> oh, Nicks right. are the only two. Like, quick throw in of Stevie Nicks. Thanks. Yeah. Um, and Chrissy no, McVie. Just jagging you. We, we went with a cat. Cat, okay. And triviality. Uh, I think know, Matt and I think. Yeah, they have, have an the album called uh, White Toad. Pony, so we wrote Pony. Yep, Pony. Uh, the correct answer is a snowy owl. Oh, but so I would have also accepted owl or anything. <laughs> well, what so we if said. you'd accept anything, you'll take Pony? <laughs> no. Uh, snowy owl is the correct answer. All right, the next one was The Prodigy, Fat of the Land. Start with Hot Dish. Uh, we went with Cow. Cow on mm. that one, okay. Let's uh, go over to Misinformation. A lamb. Yeah, we went with a similar barnyard animal. Okay. And triviality. Uh, I hope I'm right. If not, I'm going to have to smack my Ken up. We said crab. (laughs) It is a crab. (laughs) So five points for triviality. (laughs) All right. Next is Slipknot's Iowa. Let's go with Uh, Hot Dish. We said pig having been through Iowa. We just assumed. (laughs) And misinformation. Uh, We we went with a cow. Because oh. I've never been to Iowa, but I imagine there's cows there. Am okay. I right? There's lots of cows. You are correct. Oh, okay. There are cows there. Team Triviality? What is that? Tiger. Oh, I said tiger. A tiger. 
There is not a tiger on the album cover. It is a goat. Mm. All right, next yeah. is uh, Weezer Ratitude. We said rat. Maybe a little <laughs> Just for the obvious. <laughs> yeah. All right, a rat. Misinformation? We yeah, also we... said rat. Yeah, we rat. said rat. And triviality. This is one I actually remember. I believe it's a dog jumping through something. A dog. And a dog is correct. Yeah. Next is Pink Floyd's Adam Hart Mother. Let's start with Hot Dish. We said deer. Deer. <laughs> Misinformation? We said pig. Yeah, we said pig. Pig. Well known for Pink Floyd. And uh, triviality. I'm pretty sure the pig was on uh, Animals, uh, their 77 release. We said cow. And the correct answer is cow. And uh, <laughs> Jeff did pull that one out. He described it uh, exactly. It's uh, from You're looking kind of looking from the backside of the cow's cow. Cow's ass, yes. Yes. And, uh, I, I do own every single Pink Floyd album. <laughs> Number six, Fleetwood Mac's Mystery to Me. Hot dish. We said a horse. Horse. Hey. Misinformation? Don't 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 take it as a good sign if you also <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking more solidarity, guys. <laughs> so you guys said horse as well? We, we also said horse. We also said horse. Because you know what? Horses are mysterious. That's what I said. Oh yeah. They're very mysterious. TV Nick's riding, riding a horse. around on one. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Team Triviality. Some tall grass. Uh, Matt and I really wanted to say sex pants, but we settled in on sheep. Sheep. Well, the correct answer is a baboon. Oh. Baboon. That's not mysterious at all. I'm trying to remember that album cover. <laughs> made yeah. a monkey out of me. Okay. Hums, you'd prefer an astronaut. This one's kind of tough. Uh, this is where we just ran out of animals and just started grasping at animals. So we went with elephant. Elephant. <laughs> We first we wrote space bird, yes, but then we just changed it to regular bird, just a regular ass bird, standard bird, bird. Earth bird. <laughs> okay, Earth bird. <laughs> Triviality. Uh, I believe we said human. Yeah, human. It is an animal. Um, this actually, you mentioned white pony before. Um, this is an album cover that very well may have influenced that design. It's a uh, zebra standing mm. alone on a uh, green background. Hmm. <laughs> All right, Pearl Jam's versus. What do we have? Hot dish. No. Yeah, we went with a donkey. Donkey. Misinformation. Sheep. Yeah, we said sheep. Sheep. And uh, triviality. Yeah, and I wrote down Jeremy. Jeremy <laughs> spoke here. It is a sheep. Oh. So misinformation is on the board. Good job. Woo woo. All we right. are so good at this. <laughs> Metallica's black album. Hot dish. Crow. Crow? All right. And uh, misinformation? We went with a snake snake. because it is the most Metallica of all the animals. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And triviality? With the majestic unicorn. The majestic unicorn is incorrect. It is a snake. Misinformation (gasps) strikes again. Wow. (laughs) This table's too wide. It's a a coiled... outline of a snake in the bottom right hand corner i believe um so uh hot dish what did you say for failure magnified oh this one we we got it locked out we said a giraffe (laughs) going on an african safari and uh trivia hot dish misinformation (laughs) you said an ant because you know you you magnify ants in the sun sure smart Trivia. Well, you shouldn't, but <laughs> triviality. Uh, I think we think if you're going to magnify failure, you'd probably make the platypus. So we said platypus. The correct answer is the no. It's a frog. <laughs> it's a frog. So at the right. end Zero of that, uh, misinformation gains ten points. Triviality gains fifteen points, and uh, unfortunately, a whiff for trivia hot dish. <laughs> better than expected so <laughs> we named some animals yeah. so that was exciting yeah you picked out some animals that's yeah. that's all that matters all right so let's move right along to question one of the second round mike mignola is best known for his creation of what comic book character whose real name is anung un rama in 1994 we are locked in okay trivia hot dish locked in could be it's the era yeah, I feel like that was when the movie came out. But... Okay. We're locked in. Okay. Triviality's locked in. Misinformation, how are you doing over there? We're talking. We're talking. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go with... Yeah, just go with yeah, that. Yeah, uh, we have, yeah, all, we're we have we're an answer. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's start with yeah. misinformation. 
Um, I put Avatar: The Last Airbender. Okay, Avatar. What do you uh, What do you say? Triviality. Uh, just based on the era, that was when a lot of uh, comics people left Marvel to start their own comics, um, and we wrote Spawn. Spawn. Okay. And how about you guys at Trivia Hot Dish? Um, well, there was no real like logic behind it, but the first thing that came to my head was Bane, so that's what we went with. Bane? Okay, well, three pretty good guesses. Unfortunately, we're not going to have the right answer here. It is Hellboy. Uh, oh my god, I just watched that movie. Literally. Oh, wow. Huh. A movie you've seen. <laughs> <laughs> no, right? A long-running thing on our podcast is that there are many touchstone films of our lifetimes that Lauren hasn't ever Not seen. seen. Yeah. So we have a we have a Google Doc that somebody's been maintaining for us of all of the things that I mentioned that Lauren says she's never seen, and then she will have to go back and it's watch. It's getting long. longer and longer. <laughs> I can't relate our, to that our at listeners all. are angry at me. So. <laughs> <laughs> They're pretty good movies too. All yeah, right, that's what I hear. Question two: What work of film fiction features a mashed-up language called city speak? Described as a mishmash of Japanese, Spanish, German, and what have you. I would accept a second answer, but it would be nonsense if you said it. You like that one better? I do. Okay. We're locked in. Okay. We have we have an answer. We have an All answer. All right. <laughs> Misinformation is in. So we're just waiting on Trivia Hot Dish. How do you feel about this one? Okay. Ooh, this is a tough one. Um, <laughs> so far we have zero idea. Uh, but Japanese, Spanish, and German, is it some type of weird alternate post-World War II. I was thinking Man in the High Castle, but that it's not that, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure. Because um, I don't know if you consider that film, since it's an Amazon series. Jill has Miyazaki down, um, which mm. I'm familiar with the name, and that's about it. <laughs> um, um, yeah, we can, let's let's go with that. Um, so we're going to go with uh, Howl's Moving Castle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, Howl's <laughs> Moving Castle, great film. Uh, how about you guys, Misinformation? We're going to say Edge of Tomorrow. The the classic Tom Cruise and <laughs> Live Die Repeat. You know what? Yeah. That Live movie die, repeat. F- rocked. <laughs> yeah, that was an excellent movie. <laughs> <laughs> did not get the uh, the praise it deserved. And what did you guys say? Triviality. Um, so we figured it was a dystopian future where it's kind of like post-language. Uh, initially, I'd written down Mad Max. Um, and then I wrote down Blade Runner. And Jeff liked that one more. So I stuck with Blade Runner. Well, you guys were on the right track here. It is Blade Runner. All right. <laughs> Why did I say it that way? Just to mess with you. <laughs> where are your questions about rom-coms? Huh? Yeah. Where, where are yeah. your yeah. questions about? They say write what you know. That guy. See, that guy's pointing at himself. <laughs> they say write what you know, and I do. All right, next question. What Disney villain shares a first name with the author of the Earthsea and Hainish Cycle series of science fiction books? Misinformation We're is locked, locked in. in. Okay. Oh no. So just triviality Disney stands villain. alone. All right. So is that is that oh. better for you over there? A little Disney question for you. Disney, yeah. Little Disney Thank you. Yes. Fantasy <laughs> sci-fi <laughs> book. Uh, so Disney villains. What are we looking at? I don't think it's Ursula. Who do you think the uh, author of the Earth Sea is? Oh, I don't know any of that. I'm going purely Disney villain. There's Darth no, like, Darth Vader. It's right? Like Philip so, K. Dick, and then there's like a Prince Philip or something. Hmm. What's Gaston's first name? Gaston. Adolf. His name is Gaston Gaston. Oh, okay. No, it's... Okay. <laughs> this is not helpful. Uh, well, I'm going to answer Scar, because I know it's wrong, <laughs> yeah, and I don't Scar. care anymore. All right, let's pass it over to Trivia Hot Dish. You did mention uh, if... Miyazaki on the last question. Maybe that helped you out on this one. I, I think if Team Triviality had looked at the screen when they were listing off, uh, they would have seen some shocked faces, because I'm pretty sure it's Ursula. Hmm. And misinformation? We also said Ursula for Ursula. Yeah, the Lovely. very first thing you guys said was, well, it's not Ursula. <laughs> but it is Ursula K. Le Guin. Mm. And uh, her book was also adapted into an uh, anime film by Goro Miyazaki, son of Hayao Miyazaki. Mm. So that's why I thought they might get it. There's some heavy overtones in Ponyo for Little Mermaid as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, moving on to the next question. No, he's not part of a football family dynasty. However, this newcomer to the Chicago Blackhawks should hopefully supply some consistent defense for the team after playing 65 games with the Flyers last season. So Trivia Hot Dish is locked in as well as Triviality. So we're just waiting for misinformation. What do you guys think? Do you want to just pick a name? Pick a name. That sounds like someone who's in football. We'll just say Manning. 
Okay, Manning and Trivia Hot Dish. We also said Manning. Manning and Triviality. I, you know, when you're thinking football, family dynasties, I'm, you're pretty much looking at Manning, so we said Manning. Yep, looks like you all got it through the hint. <laughs> guy's name is Brandon Manning, mm. and hopefully he Manning. helps us out this year. Yeah, he's an older guy, right? I feel like. Uh, he's not too old. He's uh, under 30. But yeah. uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully uh, better better luck this year <laughs> and uh, points all around today. So next <laughs> question. Nice job. <laughs> Number five, Jean, Tina, Louise are the troublemaking children featured on what TV show? Yeah, we're locked in. Jean, Tina, and Louise. Jean. We're also locked in. Misinformation. Okay. Yeah, we are locked in as well. All right. This might have been an easy one for everybody. Let's start with misinformation. It's Bob's Burgers. I've never seen it. Hot dish? <laughs> <laughs> no, we said Bob's Burgers mm-hmm. as well. And Triviality. Yep. Robert's Burgers. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We won't accept Robert's burgers. I've never Robert's seen it. I don't know anything. Yeah. You mean Robert's hamburgers? That's correct. <laughs> and uh, that's points all around. And uh, I just want to oh, really quickly say butts. Mm-hmm. Uh, number six. What are the two main bones that comprise the lower leg? No, it, it is. It is correct. Okay. Trivia hot dish is in, and triviality is in. I'm just gonna write Jeff. Looks like everybody is in, so let's begin with misinformation. It's the tibia and the fibula. Tibia and fibula. Let's go with hot dish. Uh, We put down the, what did you write? Um, Well, we said fibula and tibula, but I think we might be wrong. Fibula and tibula? Yes. Okay. And triviality? Um, We agree with misinformation. We say this is the tibia and the fibula. Okay. It is the tibia and fibula. So points for triviality and misinformation. Unfortunately, you guys Sorry. just got it a little okay. bit messed up. But uh, you go right. We All were, I had was the knee bones connected to the hip bone. <laughs> yeah. You guys were very close. In so. Ken's case, it's the uh, radius and ulna because he walks everywhere on his hands. But right, that's right. Uh, can we get a quick <laughs> score update before proceeding, Matt? All right. After the sixth question, it is triviality with 105, uh, trivia hot dish with 60, and misinformation with 90. Still All a close right. game. Woo. Yep. Anything could happen in the uh, end of this and the final round. So let's go on to question seven. Being the only other member besides the giraffe of animal family Giraffe Day, what animal might be in the midst of an identity crisis having a rear end and legs that distinctly resemble a zebra pattern? Uh, misinformation is locked in. Okay. I've seen this animal. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they have them at the Brookfield Zoo. Mm. Which is approximately 0.5 miles from here. So we will be right back. <laughs> Matt and Jeff went for a quick job. <laughs> just going to go check out the Africa exhibit. Yeah. Okay, just waiting now for Hot Dish to lock in. Oh, we are locked in. This one might be way All right, let's start thing. with you guys. Uh, we went with the wildebeest. Wildebeest. Mm. Not a bad guess. And how about you guys? Uh, right, misinformation? <laughs> uh, misinformation went with an okapi. Okapi. Mm. And triviality. With the classic Thunder Horse. Is that a Pokemon as Ooh, well? Or? I, I don't know what it is. All right. The correct answer is Okapi. Mm. So Whoa, misinformation, right. closing the gap a little bit. Next question, number eight. Yellow journalism, or what we might call clickbait these days, is a term coined during the circulation war between William Randolph Hearst's New York Journal and this man's New York World. Prizes go to the winner. Misinformation mm-hmm. is locked in. Okay. Trivia Hot Dish is locked in. Okay. okay. So it seems like Triviality is the only team having trouble mm. on this one. I'm trying to get the reference. Do you have anything? No. Okay. I, I, I know Hurst, but I don't know much about his competitors. Because mm. he wiped him off the face of the earth. Right? No, just because he's in uh, Deadwood. So, uh, Just want to put a Rockefeller? Sure. All right. We're locked in with, with a Rockefeller. Any Rockefeller. Yeah. Okay. A trivia hot dish. Uh, he's better known nowadays for excellence in journalism. It's Pulitzer. Pulitzer, mm. and how about uh, misinformation? We also have Pulitzer. Pulitzer is correct. Joseph Ooh. Pulitzer, to be specific. Misinformation taking the lead. Ooh. Ooh. Moving on to a geography question just for Jeff here. Nuke is the capital and largest city of what country? Pretty simple. How do you spell it? That's N U U K. Misinformation is locked Next, in. We are locked in with our autonomous region slash country. <laughs> Everyone's locked in except us. Well, my immediate guess went to like um, like the Yukon Territory or none of it in Canada, but obviously that's 
because yeah. it just sounds Inuit to me. Right. But well, Greenland's a territory of Denmark, so it could be Greenland. Reykjavik is Iceland for sure. Do you want to just say Greenland? I'm fine with that. Okay, we locked in with Greenland. Okay, Greenland for triviality. How about trivia hot dish? We also went with Greenland. Greenland and misinformation. We also said Greenland. Greenland is correct. So points all around. <laughs> it is a Russia. autonomous constituent country. Yeah. It's owned by Denmark. It's owned by them, but it is an <laughs> autonomous constituent country. Yeah, I was like, Sporkle doesn't have this on the world country quiz. Yeah. No matter how many times <laughs> yeah. I type I it like, in, it won't take it. familiar, but... Yeah. All right. And the final question of regulation. What do these items have in common? Tite Kubo's <laughs> manga series... The right. band Nirvana and yeah. sodium hypochlorite. We're locked in. I got it through science We're and Nirvana. In. We're locked in. <laughs> A lot of high fives going on. Yeah. Everybody, Everybody's locked in. All right, let's start with Team Triviality. We went with Bleach. Bleach. How about uh, misinformation? We went with Teen Spirit. <laughs> teen Spirit? <laughs> Not a bad guess. And uh, how about Hot Dish? I, I had no clue, but Jill, as the chemist, said Bleach. Okay, the correct answer is Bleach. Dang it. I was waiting for the I one piece. I thought I was being so clever. <laughs> the, the name of the manga series, uh, the name of an album by Nirvana, and, of course, uh, the uh, common name for sodium hypochlorite. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, let's get this score at the end of regulation. All right. Scores at the end of regulation. Uh, Team Trivia Hot Dish uh, with 90. Uh, Team Triviality with 125. And Team Misinformation with 130. All right, so it's still anybody's game with these wagers coming up. So to refresh your memory, I'm going to read the categories. You guys wager 0 to 30 points on all these categories, not to exceed that the, the points that you've earned throughout the game. And uh, then we'll get the questions read. So your categories today are, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Number two is wordplay. Number three is a work of art. Number four is 90s lyrics. And number five is Precious, based on the novel Push by Sapphire. <laughs> when I got my new car, I named it Precious, based on the movie Precious, based on the novel Push by Sapphire. <laughs> okay, all the wagers are locked in. So, let's uh, read these questions. Number one, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. What was the name of the imperious monarch that rules over the neighborhood of make-believe on Mr. Rogers' neighborhood? Number two, wordplay. Replace one letter to turn Denzel Washington wreaking havoc in Mexico City into Philippe Petit performing a daring act in 1974. Number three, a work of art. Painter Ivan Albright created a wild depiction of what literary character after being commissioned in 1943 by a film production for its use as a prop. And number four, 90s lyrics. I'm going to read the lyrics. You just let me know what the, uh, the song is. I want you to know that I'm happy for you. I wish nothing but the best for you both. An older version of me. And number five, Precious, based on the novel Push by Sapphire. What precious stone is the birthstone for September and also the gem of a 45th anniversary? Going to give everybody a few moments to answer these questions and we'll come back with their selections. Okay, all the answers are now in. So we're going to go back and uh, get those from each team and find out who will be today's cream of the crop. All right, in It's a Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, I wanted to know what the name of the king of the neighborhood of make-believe was on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. And let's start with Triviality, who wagered 15. I believe this is King Friday. Uh, do you want to elaborate on that at all? Um, he is the king. <laughs> and that is his name. No, I, I, I've watched a ton of this when I was a kid. So. What was I going to say Friday the 13th? Yeah, it's not right. No. King Friday, fine. It's King Friday the 4th. Okay, King Friday the 4th from Triviality. And let's go with Trivia Hot Dish, who wagered wow. 20 points. King Friday the 3rd. <laughs> All right, King Friday the 3rd from Trivia Hot Dish. Misinformation. That's uh, King Friday the 13th. King Friday the 13th from Misinformation. So they will be getting points on that one. Huh? It is King Friday the 13th. Huh? 
they also wagered 20, so uh. 20 points for them. All right, so question two, wordplay. Wanted you to replace one letter to turn Denzel Washington wreaking havoc in Mexico City into Philippe Petit performing a daring act in 1974. Triviality wagered 20 points, so what did you have? Uh, we thought that this is from the movie Man on Fire, and it was a tightrope walking thing, so Man on Wire. Okay. Man on Fire, Man on Wire. What did you have? Hot Dish. What did you have? Uh, hot Dish. You had 30 points on the line. Uh, a Man on Fire and Man on a Wire. Okay. And how about Misinformation, also with 30 points on the line? Uh, we also put Man on Fire and Man on Wire. All right, looks like everybody's getting points on this one. It is Man on Fire and Man on Wire. All right, number three, a work of art. Painter Ivan Albright created a wild depiction of what literary character after being commissioned in 1943 by a film production for its use as a prop. So, Team Triviality, betting conservatively, went for 10 on this one. What did you have? It was a good thing we bet conservatively because I actually had no idea. Uh, we wrote Mad Hatter. Mad Hatter. All right, Trivia Hot Dish also betting conservatively with 10. What did you have? Uh, we had no idea as well. We went with Winnie the Pooh. Ooh, Winnie the Pooh. And Misinformation going uh, all in on this one. What did you have? We put Dorian Gray. Dorian Gray mm. is actually the correct, correct answer. Yeah. So that's a big 30 points for you guys. Climbing a little higher. I didn't know they made one in 43. I also yeah. said a wild depiction of said character. Ah. Oh, yeah. you mentioned the That e helped us. <laughs> yeah. All right. Number four, 90s lyrics, Team Triviality, um, betting 30 points on the following lyrics. I want you to know that I'm happy for you. I wish nothing but the best for you both, an older version of me. For 30 points, what did you say? Yeah, I mean, you, you, you ought to know. Okay, ought to know. you ought to know. Um, for Triviality, Hot Dish betting uh, Oakland 5, what did you say? Uh, we put nothing compares to you. Nothing compares to you. And no how idea. about misinformation betting a conservative 10? Uh, we put You Ought to Know by the um, uh, incredible Alanis Morissette. <laughs> All right. You Ought to Know by Alanis Morissette is correct. So climbing uh, 30 points is triviality and 10 more for misinformation. And the final question, what it all comes down to, Precious, based on the novel Pushed by Sapphire, what precious stone is the birthstone for September and also the gem of the 45th anniversary? 10 for triviality. What did you have? We argued about this one for quite some time. Uh, and what did we throw around? Sapphire, but then it was in the answer, so we gave up on that one. And then we said Ruby. Ruby. And uh, Trivia Hot Dish, 15 points on the line. What did you have? Uh, well, September is my birth month, so we said Sapphire. <laughs> no. <laughs> and misinformation with 10 points. What did you have? We also put Sapphire. Sapphire. Now because we, it is Julia's birth month as well. We, had, we, had, <laughs> we, were, and we were so sure, but we're like, Ken would, why would Ken do that? <laughs> and I, I would do that. The correct answer <laughs> is Sapphire. Woo, woo. Uh, considering misinformation swept the final round, I have, I have a good feeling on how this one ended up. <laughs> so at the end of the game, in uh, third place, we have Trivia Hot Dish with a very respectable 100 points. They nice. uh, gained 10 Yay. points in that last round. Uh, Team Triviality in second place, 140 points, gaining 15 in the last round. Mm -hmm. Yay. Yay. Woo. Yay. And, of course, our cream of the crop for today's game, Misinformation, 230 whopping points. Congratulations, well guys. Yeah. You are today's cream of the crop. The cream of the crop! Nobody does it better. What do we win, Bob? <laughs> you win uh, the uh, Triviality Championship uh, Honorific Imaginary Belt. Yeah. Awesome. Well, you give. I thought you had prizes. I thought that's the only reason why I came on this show. <laughs> <laughs> the fabulous prizes. Behind that door yeah. is. Oh my a God! Yeah, tell me what's dryer. in that door. No, nothing to nothing to. Big today, old pile of bragging rights. Yeah, big old pile Mr. of bragging Box. rights. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm okay with well, that. Well, awesome. That was really fun, guys. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you for yeah, joining thanks. us. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, before we go today, um, why don't you guys tell us where we can find your show, starting with misinformation. Oh, yeah. Um, we're on iTunes slash Apple Music. I guess that's what they call it now. <laughs> Apple Podcasts. I don't know. I'm an Android user. Um, <laughs> Google Play, Stitcher, and whatever podcast app um, you use with our RSS feed. And uh, our RSS feed is on our website, uh, www.missinfopod.com. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And Trivia Hot Dish. How about you guys? 
Uh, you can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, Google Play. Um, or just Google Trivia Hot Dish Podcast and uh, we'll show up. Excellent. Well, thank you awesome. both for uh, participating in today's game. It was a lot of fun. I know uh, we had a lot of fun. I had fun writing these questions and asking them to you. So thank you yeah. to Tom, Jill, and Julia, and Lauren, and my hey. colleagues here in the studio, Matt and Jeff. My name is Ken, and that was Triviality. Sean Avery's tactics of screening the goaltender like nothing I've ever seen before. Amazing. Stuff. Just walking that line? He, well, he was facing Brudder the whole... He didn't even watch the play at all. Wow. And Brudder did his level best to keep his concentration and his cool. Gomez is flying. He sets up Yager. Yager for Gomez holding on to it out in front. They score! The guy you talked about, Sean Avery. Power play goal.